what's up everybody welcome back to the toronzo show um i know it's been a very long time um well y'all don't really know that honestly because the last episode that i uploaded was from january and nobody knew it i fooled you all it was an old episode and so um yeah i've been no that's not true that's actually a lie i made the episode in march i want to say it was like march or something like that um i made it in like march and i don't know a lot has happened in between then i moved locations that's why the background don't look um how i was before when i was on my couch i was staying at a i don't know if i want to name the motherfuckers or not maybe maybe not i was staying at a different set of apartments and they fucked me over i was working there actually so i was like a leasing person and it was literally <laughs> it went down here. I knew it was gonna it won't gonna go well, honestly, within my first week of being there because within the first week of being there, I had got kicked out of the work group chat. Um I got kicked out of the work group chat because I had called out the janitorial team. Well, they're not just janitors, they're maintenance people. I called out the maintenance um team for basically doing bullshit. They weren't doing their fucking job and people was coming in there to us, complaining to us and cussing us out and calling this and that. Um, because the maintenance people lying. This girl got her fucking microwave. She okay. She put it in the service order to get her microwave fixed. These motherfuckers literally walked in. They got her on they got them on camera. They didn't even know that the girl had cameras on her apartment. These motherfuckers literally wrote issue has been resolved taped it on her microwave walked out they didn't even touch the microwave at all they did not touch it um so she come back down show us the video as me as the face of the fucking apartment complex what am i supposed to look at her in the eye and say exactly so i took it straight to the group chat and i got them together and i told them that was fucked up um when i was part of it um Another part of it, I also went against management because I told them that I don't like the fact that when people get really heated at us and get in these um, situations where y'all been talking to them about and I don't know nothing about it and y'all ain't done nothing and ain't done nothing and ain't done nothing and ain't done nothing. And then um, the people come in there cussing us out and we come back to y'all and like, hey, they said they was talking to y'all. Y'all mind, you know, coming up there real quick and, you know, explain the situation to them. They'll be on some shit like, ah, uh, yeah, just give them my card and tell them to send an email. What the fuck? People ain't going for that. We are in Atlanta with black, angry people. On top of that, this was kind of like, they cater to stu it's student housing, pretty much. It's student housing, but anybody can live there. So we're not just students. Um, but yeah, it was younger people, and they weren't going for that shit. So it was a whole lot of back and forth with all that HR, and then I got kicked out of that chat. End up um, getting like 15 phone calls from HR, went back and forth with them, and it just didn't work out. So I ended up, <laughs> I ended up moving from there, and I moved to um, my new apartment complex, which uh, for the first month that I've been staying here, I haven't really, really been here because I've been traveling a lot, which I'm going to tell you all about in a minute. But I just got over the flu also, so that's why I haven't made any like recent, recent, recent episodes um and i was fucked up them bitches gave it to me and i was so pissed off well let me not call them that they're my roommates they're nice people but the motherfuckers got me sick and then every other three four days the best thing she could look at me and say i'm sorry i got you sick girl <laughs> i mean come on now it yeah it didn't work however she was nice though to give me some of her medication i was too lazy to go to the er i was doing like um like natural remedies and shit so my mom was like well she didn't tell me to do this part but i had basically um just taken like spoonfuls of like raw honey so i don't know i'm gonna tell y'all this if y'all ever got a sore throat take um real organic honey not the bullshit i don't know the brands of it but it's the one that you know that's the real deal and you yeah the raw kind and you put it on the thing and you just eat it like that it literally works instantly like it blew my fucking mind how fast it worked so i had kind of the like catch on i started to catch on and I realized another thing when you're sick, hydration um, is something that you got to do. Drink a lot of fucking water. I, when I tell you I was chugging water back to back to back to back to back, and it was making me spit up everything. It was making kind of like my nose run, I guess, because the fluid. And I was, you know, blowing my nose, spitting everything out. And I think this is the fastest recovery from being sick I've ever had. And I had the flu, nigga. I ain't never had the flu. I had, like, the regular cold. Uh, haven't caught COVID, thank God. But I was fucked up. <coughs> Look, <coughs> it's coming back to get me, Jesus. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I was sneezing, my nose was running, I had like body aches, I was really fucked up, like I was fucked up, but it all worked out, um, 
and so yeah i traveled a lot i moved around i went to um where did i start the first place i went to was danville i spent about uh, danville virginia so i'm from danville i know a lot of y'all see me on instagram and stuff think that i'm from the 757 north of virginia but i'm from the 434 um from danville and they making a lot of upgrades to it is heavy on the gentrification down that motherfucker when i tell you when i used to go down there it was bowling movies skate town I mean, we gotta that was it a uh, hotels yeah but now they that motherfucker is booming you can go down there and throw fucking axes around they got the axe throwing place to sip and paint them motherfuckers building a water slide by the bridge what separates the north side and the south side the motherfuckers building oh no a water park they're building a water park did you know that yeah i went down there the last time they got a water park they're building um so they doing anything they got a casino everything you know all that i got to see my family i hadn't been home in like maybe five six months so it had been a very long time i hadn't seen my dog i could see him um shout out to royce y'all dogs could never and yeah so that was that after i went to um danville that's when my like vacation really 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 started i went to fucking get okay step back take a step back before I went to Danville, while I was still here in Atlanta, I went to fucking Gag City. That is Nicki Minaj's um, tour, her Pink Print 2 tour, and I went to the Atlanta show and the DC, so the DC show. The first show was in Atlanta, and I went to day one. She did day one and two. I went to day one. I had a fucking ball. When I tell y'all both shows, the motherfuckers wanted to kick me out every time. Um, I would not stay in my seat. I was all in the aisle. And the mother like, sir, you got to go out the aisle. Sir, you got to go back to your seat. Sir, put the blunt out. Hey, sir, you cannot bring your own alcohol. I've got the airplane bottle. I got one right here. Well, it won't actually move my thing, but I had like an inside pocket because I was wearing a little jean jacket. Um, snuck some in there. I had like two under my balls, one where my butt was, and I had two in my pant legs where my socks was at just in case they found the rest of them. So, when they, you know, because they're going to wind you down. And I had to make sure I got the uh, – I'm going to put y'all on game – Make sure y'all know when you go into concerts and you're trying to sneak alcohol and stuff in and you're doing the mini bottles, make sure there's no metal on the top. Only get plastic tops. They don't fucking scan. You can sneak in alcohol and they're like a dollar a piece versus $15 um, for a watered down ass shot, which you're going to pay once you get inside. And you'll figure it out before I do because I ain't going through that no more. Um, I met, I'm not, let me tell you. All right. So one of the highlights of the show, um, Nicki Minaj was doing her thing and she was like, um, if you how she said she said if you got some good pussy make some noise all the girls went crazy she was like if you got some good dick make some noise why the stud behind me and she was like shit my shit in the trunk right now oh god my shit in the trunk i said oh my god she didn't have no shame at all and i looked like and she was like yeah yeah i'm like don't say that towards me i don't want none of it don't want none of it but she was cute though but no that shit took me out but um the Atlanta show was lit in D.C. Nikki brought out 50 Cent, 10 out of 10. When I tell y'all, I had never in my life expected to see 50 Cent live in a concert or whatever. It's just nothing that I ever put together in my brain. I didn't even know the nigga did tours, which he don't, I guess, because um, he's busy being a fucking producer, movie star, mogul, legend that he is. But he came out, he did a good job. And I thought, okay, because Nicki Minaj got a song with him called Beep Beep on her new album. One of my favorite songs on the album. It was original at first. She remixed him. And yeah, that's one of my favorites. That was my original favorite, actually, off the album. And she, they didn't just do that song. After they did that song, um, it was about she let him do like eight, nine songs. Like he really, 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 really did his thing. Can you make sure we record him? Okay, I had to make sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when we first started, believe it or not, I had the microphone off, so. Um, yeah, I cut it on, so we're good to go now. So, yeah, I'm sorry. All right, sorry, that's the ADD. All right, so we're back. 50 Cent did his thing. She brought out uh, Monica after that. I didn't even know how many Monica songs I knew, and Monica looks fucking amazing. I want to start by saying that she looks great. I don't know how old she is, but um, she looked good. She dressed good, and I want that close, but I bet she smelled good, too. She sounded good. I didn't know that I knew all of the songs. People was, like, in the crowd, like, crying. And something that I do want to say that I really, really appreciated um, as to why Nicki brought Monica on her tour in the first place. So Monica is just not at, you know, like, a special, you know, person that she, like, bring on every other show. She's at every single show. Like, she, Nicki put her on the tour. So um, they was always doing interviews back and forth. And Monica was like, you know, I grew up on, I mean, Nikki was like, I grew up on Monica, always loved her music. Um, 
and she just always been shouting out Monica, you know, in all the interviews she's been doing. And so Monica has done the same. Over the years, she's been shouting out Nicki Minaj and saying, you know, how much she like her rapper personality, her fierceness and boldness, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so Monica recently, I don't know if y'all seen on the Shade Room, Monica had came out and was like that she feels like her she feels forgotten and she feel like that people don't really remember her and she don't get the recognition that she should get even though she has you know um her discography is so great and so yeah nikki brought her on tour and i bet that was like a blessing for her to just see like how all everybody when michael came out everybody cut the little flashlights on how many people was like singing her songs and they was engaged and they was really fucking with her and she had a whole little it wasn't like three four songs she let her do damn the half a goddamn album and it didn't feel dragged out it was fun so yeah that was that after um there i went to louisiana no actually i started in mississippi so i went to mississippi pascagoula mississippi i don't know if you ever been to mississippi only thing i've ever thought in my head about mississippi honestly was p valley um which is based their story is pretty much based off like a casino but then when you go to fucking mississippi when i went there it's like a very very small town pascagoula and they do got a strip club and the motherfuckers got a casino and that's like what they do like people that that's what they do there's nothing to do there it's not a goddamn thing to do in pascagoula but the casino um so yeah i went to the casino i went in there and i did gamble a little bit i went the first night they got me the first night they get did get me i lost like 60 dollars. i want to say and then i went back the next day and i want to say i lost again um but i only lost like maybe 20 40 dollars and then the very last time i went i won like 400 and something dollars so yeah i made all my money back and so that was lit um i did not play i was only playing the slot machines my friend was there this nigga won like a fucking up he won way more than a thousand dollars but he be doing like blackjack and stuff like that i only play blackjack at work we used to do it for like bonuses and stuff but i was scared to put my money on like an actual card game i was not willing to do that but yeah he won a lot of fucking money um i'm used to the fish table in danville we do the fish table it's kind of like a slot machine but it's like an online game um and you basically can wage different shots there's a lot of fish going around there's sharks and octopus and nemo looking fish and dory looking fish and the bigger the fish the more money you get so that's what i'm used to um the fish tables but i fucked with the casino and what do we do after the casino we went to moss point mississippi if any of y'all from mississippi y'all know exactly what i'm talking about so we went to moss point mississippi it's supposed to be like the most dangerous place um there which makes sense when we got there there was niggas on a fucking um a charter bus and somebody was trying to shoot the goddamn bus up like the greyhound kind of thing at the gas station in broad daylight they didn't give a fuck um that was that after we went there there's also escataba Escatawba and Gautier, Mississippi is the places I was at. I think we went to Mississippi, we went to Louisiana. Uh, that was my first time in New Orleans. I always wanted to go to New Orleans. We went to Bourbon Street, and I actually got to show my titties for beads. And I always wanted to do that, honestly, my whole entire life. I didn't know how it worked because I always would hear, it, what, I don't know what TV show it was. It was like, show us your boobs, show us your boobs. And I always wanted to show my boobs, but I never had the opportunity. But it was people, it was like old drunk white men up in the thing. And they was like, show us your fucking titties. And I was like, and they threw them down, and I got the red ones. And um, I tried to do it a second time, but apparently they were not talking to me. They were talking to my homegirl, and she wasn't willing to do it. So their loss. Um, yep, yeah, that was Bourbon Street. I want to say I ate like, what did I eat while I was there? The shit was fucking disgusting. I ate, that's something I learned. When you vacation, do not eat on the strip at all, ever. On the strip is basically some commercial bullshit that they trying to get to represent what the town or city is. Do not ever do that again. I realized that I was doing that when I was, I did that when I was in Las Vegas. I did that when I was in, um, I forgot ocean something i don't know new jersey um miami but it's the little off skirt places like the real um authentic kind of places what you want to look for um yeah when you're going out to eat so the food was ass i had i'm trying to think of what the fuck i had what is new orleans good known for uh the crawfish i had catfish i had the creole okay that's what I had. I had gumbo. The shit was disgusting. I had catfish. It was disgusting. I had everything I had was horrible. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. 
and none of it was good. Um, from the place that I went, I wish I knew the name of it so I can tell y'all to stay the fuck away from there. But it was on a strip, so I get it. You know, they're gonna kind of sell you what they're gonna sell you. But that was that. I also went to Alabama. We went to Black Beach. If y'all know what that is, it's kind of like what we do in Danville, where everybody go to um, Myrtle Beach for Senior Week and stuff like that. Um, it's the same thing. So basically, Black Beach is a lot of black people who get together and go to the beach in Alabama. It's in Biloxi, Alabama. And yeah, niggas just out there. Um, this year, they had a big problem with the police to where the police did not let them have any vendors. So basically, last year was their biggest year ever, and uh, they was out there showing their goddamn ass. Um, so this year, they was like, okay, well, y'all can't have no vendors thinking they was going to keep niggas away. When I tell you, that motherfucker was flooded. I don't know if y'all saw my Instagram stories or not, but I was posting, you know, all the people that was there. The niggas is fine. The niggas is fine. The niggas in Alabama. If y'all looking for them, they're in Alabama. Um, but they fucked me up. I was having a good time, drinking my drink, smoking a blunt, walking down the thing. Next thing you know, it was like 10 motherfuckers coming down the street. Everybody had a snake wrapped around their neck. And not just a little one, like a real fucking snake. And them motherfuckers wrapped around, and it won't even, like, mind you, as he walking down the strip, niggas is like this. Like, we are neck to neck, body to body. And y'all got snakes wrapped around y'all whole goddamn thing. And it's just like this. So you just might walk by. You might be the person to walk by me. And you might just get a little a little snake to the chick. No. That fucked me up. My biggest fear is a snake. So when I first saw the snake, of course, I was over exaggerated. Not did a whole little one of those. Um, but I tried to hold it together. Because I noticed the nigga before, no, how did it happen? After I did that, apparently there was somebody behind me that also kind of like jumped. He was like, oh, you scared? Oh, you scared? And he was about to try to scare the nigga with the snake. So I was like, okay, I'm glad he didn't see my little, because we would have had to fight. We would have had to fight. We would have had to fuck him up. And the Sanjay would have had my back. Um, What did we do after that? We went to Gulf Shores. That's basically just before you get to um, Florida. So it was kind of like the clear water, nice place in Alabama. That was a lot of fun. Um, We went to this seafood restaurant. Which was off the strip, too, actually, of their strip. But their food was actually good. Um, so, yeah, Gulf Shores, Alabama was lit. Um, D.C. was lit. When I did go to D.C., you know, for the Gag City thing, um, me and my best friend, we hadn't seen each other in a very long time, ended up having a little – I don't even know if I want to go there, to be honest. I don't know. I guess you can say I kind of got lucky. I got lucky in D.C. Um yeah, I won't go there, but she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't even say it. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I did did a little small fast in March. So in from March the 1st to the third week of March, I had did a fast where I had cut out, um, I cut out red meat. Basically, only shit I was eating was fish, fruit, water, and I wasn't drinking alcohol. Uh, so I was just smoking, eating fish fruit and water and it literally made a big difference first of all I could tell it made a big difference in my skin when I was doing it um for one I had a whole lot more energy and then something else too that I realized when you eating like the bullshit which is like steaks burger stuff like that you realize you when you finish eating you get that sense of like oh my god I'm full now I'm lazy and you get the itis that kind of stuff and that's because you're eating the wrong stuff and it makes sense in my head now because when I was eating the fruit and stuff like yeah of course I would still get like full but it was never like a slouchy food it's like okay I feel good now like now we about to so yeah it definitely made a big difference and also that was the very first time I went that long without drinking either um yeah i had to get a reality i was like god damn i'll be getting fucked up because um what was that three weeks with no alcohol and once i went that long without drinking they kind of made me realize damn this shit don't happen often and i'll be drinking a lot and not even so much so where it's like damn i'm shit faced every single day but it's like I at least gotta have a little whoop whoop just to let the day float a bit a little so i'm just like shit they had a Put the fucking reins on the reindeer for a second, but hey, that's my problem, not y'all's motherfucker. Um, what did I do else? Oh yeah, and I was in Dama too. Something else I don't like. I wanted to just bring up a little bit. When people <coughs> if I'm driving you somewhere and I you tell me, okay, we're going here. When you tell me we're going here, I either know where the hell I'm going or I'm gonna put in the GPS where I'm going. And clearly um, you can see when I'm using the GPS because you see me looking at the phone or whatever. Do not ever fix your mouth to turn to me and say, why you go this way? 
This is the way the fucking GPS is telling me to go. And I had this conversation with my mama because she started telling me, oh, what? You going to go this way when you could have turned left on some, some, some and turned right on some, some, some and you would have ended up right at some, some, some? No, nigga, because that's not what the GPS says. Y'all know the hood way to get to places, but y'all don't know the shortest route to get to places. It's a big difference. What may feel like you're getting there faster because you're taking lots of cuts and turns and dips and stuff like that, but nigga, no. The GPS know what the hell they talking about. And so we riding, so that was like one of the, you know, one the first or second rides. The third ride roll around, um, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make her understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going the way that the GPS is telling me. She was like, really? You still going this way? And so I was like, okay, okay. Look at the time that it says. It says 0.7 miles, and it's going to take us, what was it, like seven minutes to get there. She was like, okay, turn right here. We took the turn from 0.7 and went to 0.9, and then the minute went up one. She said, okay, well, yeah, you just keep going. Then you go turn to some, some, some right here. Turn again, the minute went up, and then the thing went up. No, y'all know how to get there. That don't make it the shortest route. <laughs> it does not make it the shortest route And that's a waste of fucking gas And guess what I ain't got a lot of money to spend on gas So we gonna go the way that the GPS said I am And if you're in the car You are too Surprise bucko um, So yeah That kind of has stressed me out I still love you mama But you stressed me with that one girl um, What else I want y'all to go on Ari Lennox Well it's probably gone now Alright so Ari Lennox Basically If y'all have not seen it She got into it with um, Joe Budden who I've never liked, honestly. And even if I did like him, if he was going against Ari Lennox, I was going to choose her side anyway, realistically. So that really doesn't even matter. So <coughs> she posted a video. And she's Queen Petty, and I love her for her. I didn't even know Ari got down like this. Ari Lennox went on her. So Joe Budden was on some kind of, um, it was some kind of like an award show, or I don't know exactly what was going on, um, or what event it was. But... He's walking out thinking he just did his big one. He's walking out. Next thing you know, a motherfucker coming from behind. Boop. Blop him right in his shit. Yep. Knocked the glasses off his socks and everything. Yeah. Fucked him up. Um, and, you know, he turned around and tried to. That's when security came. Then they broke the whole thing up. Ari Lennox was so petty. <laughs> she posted that on her Instagram story 25 times. Literally. The same video. Ari Lennox reposted it 25 times of Joe Budden getting his ass whooped. And then at the end, she called it. I, I wish I would have wrote down what she said, but she got them together real good. And he deserves it because all he do is talk shit about people um, and then play victim afterwards. Like, he just, yeah, no. He's a piece of shit. Um, which I've thought for most of my life. I kind of had a change of heart here recently, but it still felt good to see him get the hell knocked out of him to make up for the time where I didn't like him. So... That I'm grateful alone for. Um, what else do I have? Oh, okay. My friend had brought up this topic the other day, and she basically was talking about um, the pe basically the company that you keep and being around, basically being around certain types of friends who you feel like would protect you in certain situations. Um, and she had basically went through a situation where she felt like somebody had intimidated slash confronted or I don't know kind of was like being a little forceful to her and she didn't feel like the people around her were reactive enough um to basically feel like she would be protected if shit had actually hit the fan so I think that's kind of a layered question um when you deal with certain types of people because you got some kind of people where you're like, okay, I definitely want this person to protect me, but then that person doesn't really know how to take it to like a, oh, okay, hey, um, well, that person didn't like that. You shouldn't do that again. They think that was kind of mean. Can you kind of back off? Like, you got some people where if you say, hey, we got a problem, the first thing they're going to do, boom, and the situation is solved in their eyes. Or you got some kind of people where, well, okay, this is happening, then they boom deck them in the fucking face then you got some kind of people who can actually sit down have a conversation talk with that person be like hey they didn't like this this is why um do you understand that you cannot do that again so it's like it's different tiers um of that but i think it is necessary at the end of the day to have somebody around you that is going to that you feel like that you are protected by as if it was like your parent and or um your lover, even if it's on like a friend kind of level, um, which I personally have honestly felt 
like I made a good choice. To be honest, most of the people I can think of in my life, as far as like friends and stuff like that, I feel like if I was at a bar or somebody was like trying to bully me or pick on me or do something like that, ain't none of my friends going for that shit. I can't see a single one, to be honest. Um, though I have one that is a little more timid, um, if push, even that motherfucker going to really get busy. So it's important to surround yourself about those kind of people. And that I think that's also a good way to see um, who you know who your real friends are and not even in an extreme way it don't have to be something as extreme as somebody can step in your shoes or pushed you down or punched you in the back of the head it can be somebody says something shady in their presence or you go to the bathroom you know if somebody was to like do something to your drink like you need to know people around you like really got your fucking back um and then vice versa too make sure because i try to be conscious of that too like if something happens to somebody if i see something that i don't like um try to speak up on it um and i don't know and just assess the situation definitely first because you can also drag yourself into situations too where it can be ill and it kind of sucks to say but it really does happen to where it could be like a toxic couple who you might be around them for the very first time and they get the fight into something like that. And you feel like, you know, your obligation to get up and break that fight up, you know, do whatever you got to do. And then you go over there next week and they start fighting again. And then they, oh, we broke up and we did this and that. And then you go over there tomorrow and then they fighting again. And then it's like, okay, no matter how many times I break it up, how many times I jump in, like at what fucking point is it like, God damn, I need to mind my goddamn business. Or do you do something every single time? I don't know. It's kind of hard to... It's hard to gauge, really not for me. I think I would be the person to do something every single time. But at the same time, I'm just going to probably remove myself from y'all altogether because I don't really want to go through that. That shit is traumatizing um, for sure. But, yeah, we have to end of the day, surround yourself by good people and take initiative if you see somebody doing something wrong to somebody. Um, yeah, really, is what it boils down to. I did watch a. Oh no, I did want to. All right, <laughs> I did a Facebook post, and I was basically like, "Who's trying to play cards?" And I was like, "Who's trying to play cards?" But I didn't realize so if people who have been on the gay date apps before know y'all know what the word hosting means. So my um, straight homeboy hit me up, and he was like, "Oh, shit, we trying to play cards and stuff." I was like, oh, "Okay, word, I'm hosting." And he was like, "Wait, huh?" And I was like, "Oh shit." It kind of click one in one click. I was like, oh, shit, that's not what you say. Like, y'all come over here. Y'all come to my crib. Yeah, so if you know, you know. And that just clicked in your head. Yeah. That's how I had to delete. I had to delete. I had to get on the ball for there because it wasn't no good. Um, and so, yeah, I watched two movies on Netflix. I watch not movies. I watch series. Um, one was Painkillers. I'm probably late on that. But it was basically about the epidemic of Oxycontin. And um, how it was fucking everybody up. Oh, my God. I did not know that the Sackler family is a sack of shit. Um, yeah, that was my favorite. No, that was literally my favorite part of the whole entire series. The girl crazy. She said, you're nothing but a drug dealer with a ponytail. And she was talking about the white girl who was going in basically um, selling, literally selling, the f- yeah, the brand fucking ambassador of Oxycontin. Going in there telling the doctors to get their patients more, um give them more doses they got the skinny dresses the heels pulling up in the fucking porsches they bringing them gifts coffee donuts everything trying to like sweeten the butter them up to fuck over the people and then the man even said anything he was like um there's no he was like the most trusted people in the world are doctors they trust them more than their family their friends um their employers like every goddamn body because your doctor is basically the person who's in control of your health so you're gonna do what the fuck they tell you supposed to do whether that is take this little pill that's gonna have you addicted for the rest of your life and you're probably gonna sell everything in your house and you're probably gonna fuck up your job and your kids are gonna hate you your wife is gonna hate you you're gonna end up probably on something worse the guy ended up living in a fucking abandoned building um, and he was just sleeping on a random mattress with homeless people. And the nigga had a whole fucking mechanic shop doing good. Um, but, yeah, it fucked him up. Um, shout out to the son for not getting addicted. If y'all do watch that show. Because I really thought he was going to, like, you know, be one of those people who was like, oh, I'm going to do it because my dad is doing it. Yeah, this nigga started stealing the pills from his daddy, giving it to his friends. Saw how fucked up it was fucking his daddy up. And he said, no, I ain't got that to do. He stayed, he stayed away from it. Good shout out to you, bucko. Um 
And so I also watched Baby Reindeer. I know a lot of people have been talking about that. That is a fucked up show. Did you watch Baby Reindeer? Oh, my God. It is crazy. So basically what happens is there's this guy who wants to be a comedian, and he wants to be a comedian. He meets this guy. It's kind of like a Diddy situation on the low-key. Um, maybe even worse. Maybe like a Harvey Wine. It's fucked up. But – he basically wanted to be a comedian. He decided he wanted to move to wherever he moved to. He was doing comedy there. He met this guy who said, I can take your comedy to the next level. He ended up having him do drugs. They started out doing, um, I want to say Molly or something like that, something very subtle. Um, then they went from Molly to acid. Then they went from acid to do an M-bomb. Then they went from M-bomb to cocaine. They went from cocaine to crack. They started smoking crack, and then every time that they would get high, he would end up passing out, blacking out, and he, um, the dude would, like, rape him, and he would keep promising him, you know, well, keep writing this script. You're doing great. Um, you know, just make a few edits here. You're going to be great. You're going to be a star leading him on, leading him on, leading him on. Dude literally woke up, went to the bathroom to go and take a shower. His asshole had been spread open, and he was bleeding out of his ass. He was literally bleeding out the ass because the boy, had, um, the older man had raped him um, while he was asleep, and he could not figure out, which is also Stockholm Syndrome in a way, because he could not stop going back. He was, a, like, tied to him through the trauma, so he would keep going back, and he would, like, start to feel sorry for himself, like, damn, why do I keep going back, and he keep, you know, fucking me over, clearly nothing is working, he hasn't got my career no further, all he does is rape me, make me take drugs, and do whatever he tells me to do, and so, yeah, eventually, it got so fucked up, where he was just like, fuck it, I get, he gave up on the dreams, ended up going back home, and he met this lady, he met this lady, her name was Martha, Martha is a certified serial stalker, she, um, but he didn't know that. So she was literally a fucking psycho. He, she came in one day. She was all fucked up, sitting down, looking sad, and she didn't know what to do with herself. And he, um, he was like, "Hey, can I get you anything?" And she, because he was a bartender, so she came into the bar. She was like, "Can I get you anything?" And she was like, um, "No, I'm sorry, I don't have any money." He was like, "A tea or a coke or nothing?" And um, she was like, "No, I don't have any money." He was like, "It's on the house." Why the fuck you give her that free cup of tea? She stalked this man. So motherfucking, I'm talking about sending him emails after emails after emails of how bad she wanted to um, fuck him. She started stalking him. This is a true story, by the way. I forgot to add that in there. This is a real life story. And the guy who it happened to actually played himself in the movie. Um, and yeah, she started like, she was sending like him a lot of emails. She was outside of the nigga house. Every bus stop, she came into his job every single day, literally every single day. Um, all the coworkers, you know, making jokes like, oh, well, y'all, um, when y'all going to get married and stuff like that. So he realized when he started to say stuff like, oh, you know, that's not my girl. You know, she just comes in here. We're kind of cool, whatever. She would get mad and she would, like, do crazy or shit. Um, then she found out about the girlfriend, started calling her all types of whores. The guy ended up going on the um, gay dating website, found a trans woman who he was with, and he couldn't, like, accept his truth being with a trans woman because he didn't really know if he was gay or not or if it was just out of the trauma from when it happened to him when the man was raping him and then the one lady had kind of fucked him up. So he really didn't want to separate from the lady that was stalking him because she was giving him the little flattering gratification that he needed because nobody else really gave it to him. So the guy, the you know, the bad guy was putting him down, making him feel like shit. At first he made him, you know, feel good, but the rape stuff was kind of bad. And the female, even though, you know, she was kind of, like, annoying, she was always complimenting him, always there, always asking about how his day is going, stuff like that. And so he ended up having a fetish with her, jacking off to her picture. It's a mess. It's a fucking mess. It's a lot. <laughs> and y'all definitely have to watch that. It's called Baby Reindeer. It is worth watching 10 out of 10. The fact that it's a true story even blew my mind more, um, honestly. And so, yeah. I'm going to wrap this bad boy. We're going to do the last little segments real quick. I got to, so I do kudos, which basically I shout out somebody who I really, really like. Um, and I think this week I am going to give a shout out to Billie Eilish. Um, I really, really didn't even realize how much I really fucked with her music until like the last couple of, I would say since that song came out from the Barbie movie. Um, 
But before that, I still liked Bad Guy. I still liked, um, what was my other one? It was Bad Guy, which I know y'all like, oh, God, that's the, you know, it's the one everybody knows. I'll call you when the party's over. When the party's over, but it's not even that one. It's another one that I like. It's called, um, I Don't Want to Be You Anymore. That's exactly what it's called. And then there's another one, you know, from the Barbie movie, which that one is really good. But, yeah, shout out to Billy. She sound good, always look good. She's also a Barb, so she got fucking music taste. Um, love the song with her and Nikki. Um, yeah, I like her style, and I like the fact that her and her brother are like a duo. And he direct for, uh, help her record. Um, I don't know everything. The whole thing is just beautiful about it. Phineas, shout out to you too. I don't even know what he looked like, to be honest. Now that I think about it, I have no idea what Phineas looks like. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Billie Eilish. There's a would you rather. Okay. Would you rather have bad hygiene for life? Or would you rather have bi- ah. <laughs> I can't even remember that. Would you rather can you hand me my cup right now? Yeah. Would you rather have bad hygiene for life or would you rather have no teeth and a limp? I tell you what I'm going with. Well actually I don't know what I'm going with. Bad hygiene for life or no teeth and a limp? How can you get away with no teeth and a limp? No, stinking is trifling. <laughs> yeah. I can get I guess if you're young and have no teeth and a limp, you can maybe do like a cute little cane. And if you're no teeth or no teeth enough, you might can still give a good BJ. You know. Outside of that, I don't see an advantage to that. You gotta kind of it soups honestly for the rest of your life. That is true. And then you got people that is actually into that kind of stuff. They into like the man said, oh, I, I want you when I get off the gym. The musty and the natural scent and stuff like that. My thing is this. Get that ass in the shower. We ain't going through that. And my thing, and you know, whatever y'all into, that's what y'all could be into. But I have actually came into that. Uh, I came in, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I done ran into niggas that is into that. And I am not into that. But I'll be like, um, like they were trying to link us up and I'll be like, okay, you know, I'm with it. But let me, all right, I'm about to take a shower real quick. Let me know when you're on the way and kind of stuff. And they'll be like, oh, no, I want you just like that. What? No, because guess what? I don't want you just like that. You need to get your ass in the shower, wash underneath the balls, the ass crack, and let the water run through too. Yeah, it don't have to be this way. It does not have to be this way. And then, and that kind of reminded me of the thing, too, because you know how people used to be like, um, to the room stink. We're going to do it to the room stink. Listen, if we start off clean and get there. (laughs) The only thing I can imagine why the room stink, if y'all bottoms don't do what you got to do. Shout out to y'all, though. But the room shouldn't, it shouldn't stink. It shouldn't stink. Um. I'm trying to think of a scenario of where the room might stink, but I just can't think of one. Outside of you not getting in the, the bathtub. Locker rooms are always number one. Yeah, for sure. Really Look, this is gay sex, by the way. I don't know how, you know, vaginas got different situations, but uh, we shouldn't stink. Uh Yeah, and that's that. Oh, so I got to choose one. All right, so I get, what do you think? What would you do? No teeth in a limp or bad hygiene for life you known as the person that walk that oh god your arms think people offering you deodorant and stuff when you walk in the room constantly pulling you to the side letting the windows down yeah they'll probably yeah yeah she can't help that she ain't got no teeth so let's just be nice to her and then the limp you can't even go to six for like Yeah. Oh no, I turn into a pimp walk. Yeah. <laughs> Not the pimp walk. I guess I'ma do the I'ma do the no teeth and a limp. I might have to get me some grills if that's an option. But I don't think surgery is an option. You just gotta go ball mouth with life. Uh, off my right grim. 
I'll be fine. 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 <laughs> I know I, I couldn't get down like that. I'm sorry. Shout out to Beatbox. That's what we've been on lately. The Beatbox. How long is this episode been going? What's the time on there? We've been drinking Beatbox, y'all getting fucked up. We danced the night away last night. <laughs> Forty. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, perfect. This is not going to be a lot to edit or nothing. Um, word of the day. So I'm going to do three seconds. My last week, I'm going to do word of the day. Word of the day today is slow, and it's S-L-O-W. And I need us to remember, when you're dealing with people every day that just can't seem to figure it out, you keep telling them something over and over and over, but they just don't get it. Um, they have a hard time processing stuff. They have no common sense they have no book sense um and no matter how many times you might demonstrate it or maybe find somebody else to tell it to them or it just won't work and i'm gonna tell you why because they're slow we cannot count these people out people are still slow and people try to figure out like damn he keep doing this and i keep telling him to do this on some some and she's some some and she just keep doing that and he keep doing that they don't get it they're slow. Move on. That's it. That's literally what you have to do. Don't take it personal. Something else I realized too. Do not take it personal. Some people just don't have it up there. And there's nothing for you to figure out for them. You're just like, I just don't get it. You'll never get it because you're not slow. They can only understand that. And that is why they're slow and you're not so the word of the day is s-l-o-w now go after right now go and reevaluate your baby daddy your mama your cousin sister uncle everybody and maybe just think are they slow is that why they keep making these mistakes is that why they keep doing this is why they, they're probably slow and then proceed to get them the help that they might need well actually there's no help remember because they're slow yeah it's unfortunate it fucking sucks but um yeah most of my exes were kind of slow yeah am i slow for going with him i don't think i'm slow because i broke up with him <laughs> we're the healers i tried to heal him the nigga couldn't get it the nigga could not get it he was slow he would cook the eggs first. It was bad. He would cook the eggs first. He would lose the house key. He would run out of gas. Um, what else? I can't even imagine just the countless things that it would. Just slow. Always leave something. Always left the phone. Um, always leave the wallet behind. Don't remember anything. Maybe it's the video games burning the niggas out. I don't know. What do you think about anime people? Do you watch anime? I do. Not, not saying I'm a big fan. I only watch it if I'm around somebody else that watches it. Yeah. I fucks with Law and Order. Also, shout out to Alana. That's who we here with. And she's going to be on the next episode. So y'all better be fucking ready. And she's really fucking smart. And she's going to school for psychology. She's already smarter than half you bitches. So don't ever fucking play with her. Um, And I think that's about that. Oh, shout out to JP Gilly. He looks, well, let's start slow. Uh <laughs> Shout out to JP Gilly. He recently did a podcast episode where he was surrounded by a lot of straight guys who basically had discovered him being called out on the internet by a gay person saying that they had messed around. There was pictures and video, you know, whatever that had went around. And he fucking stood in his truth. He didn't give a fuck. They was like, um, he told them what happened. He said it was an altercation where I had basically was, I had uh, messed with a man and, you know, my pictures ended up out here and there and everywhere. And, you know, everybody found out. And the guy was like, oh, so do you wish that you wouldn't have done that? He was like, and if 
so no he was like even though that happened to you and that was your experience would you do it again he was like yeah and you could just tell like how uncomfortable everybody was around him that he was comfortable being an openly bisexual man and they couldn't grasp their little head around that yeah and it was really amazing he's also um a rapper and he is also about to be drafted to the fucking nba um so yeah as you can see jp we're we're very underfunded here and um we would love for you to come on the show and we would love to give you a blow no i'm just kidding but no we would love for you to come here and shout out to you for being um who you was on that fucking um podcast it was no jumper adam 20 something i don't know um that's about it that i have today i want to say um moms stop sending your sons in the store for tampons they're not going to get the right kind that happened to me every single time my mom used to send me to the store she was like get the soup or something and i would come out with i think what probably maybe a 14 year old girl would use and she would be so pissed <laughs> She would be so pissed. And then she would, uh, another thing too, we were talking about earlier, do not, if we don't smoke fucking cigarettes, don't send us into the store for no fucking cigarettes, you weirdo. I went into the store for my own shit, go give me some Newports. I go to the store, I'm like, hey, can I get some Newports? They like, short or long? I'm like, um, the regular kind? I don't know. He was like, okay, uh, soft or hard? Soft pack or hard pack? And I was like, nigga fucking newports i don't know <laughs> i don't fucking know um so i ended up getting the long cigarettes in the soft pack and she's like you bought me these long ass motherfucking cigarettes in this hard ass pack and i'm like nigga i don't smoke this shit what do you want me to do it doesn't make any sense to nobody please stop doing that um now i guess the shoe could be on the other foot because i sent my mom to the store for some games for game leaves and she came back up with some regular games and it's like we're not in the 80s mixing like cocaine and weed anymore a woo that's what they call it a woo um yeah get off drugs don't do crack or oxycontin circling back to painkillers but that's all i got to y'all today um thank y'all tapping back in next episode like i said it's gonna be an interview super excited i'm gonna have alana with me and um yeah i got re-motivated today to kind of keep doing episodes because i was talking to this guy i was in the game room here and he uh he basically came out he was like yo i love your fucking podcast and i could not remember where i had met him from um or how he might have like found me because it's not y'all. It's not I mean it's not like huge. I didn't got a lot of followers. It's like it's not like a big big thing. Uh, but I ended up meeting him at my apartment's prior, the place where I went. They had to battle corporate them cocksucking sons of bitches. Um, and yeah, we had met back then, and he'd been watching. He named the first episode that I did, and I was like, "Oh, you've been watching like for a while." And he was like, "Yeah, we met at." I'm gonna name you bitches next time. I keep dancing. <laughs> all you bitches and guess what before i get off of here god don't like ugly every person there their life fucking is falling apart it was um one girl and i want i hope you motherfuckers watch this episode i'm gonna post this clip on purpose one of y'all your skin is fucked up you're talking about um oh you're so pretty or whatever oh it's a chemical burn please you had to let everybody jizz on your face because you're a whore and that's why your skin is breaking out and bumping out because you're fucking disgusting the other girl um your body fucked up. You look terrible. You bald head. When you try to do that little blowout, whatever thing you call it, bad wig. You know what I'm talking about. Bad wig. Your wig is fucked up. Um, the other boy, um, big lip, the one with the girl butt. Everybody knows you're gay, honestly. And you try to use this poor friend of yours and make it seem like that y'all got like a weird little relationship when she made it clear when she came in that y'all are literally just friends and you trying to make everybody seem like y'all are sleeping together you're disgusting you're a creep and you remind me a lot of martha from baby reindeer so you need to go and watch that on netflix shout out to you you piece of shit um chris you were cool chris was cool um nadia was cool Shout out to Chris and Nadia. I don't know. I don't like anybody else. Oh, the uh, HBIC. You look terrible. You shape like a dud. Your wigs always suck. Your butt literally looks like two knees put together. I want to show you what your knee, what your butt looks like. This is your butt. <laughs> That's your butt. Um, your glasses are ugly. And. <laughs> 
I want to say that's about it. I want to say that's about it. Um, and for all intents and purposes, this is all had. This all happened in Los Angeles and not Atlanta. In case you're trying to sue a motherfucker, you know how they do. This happened in L.A. Um, and so yeah, shout out to y'all. I don't have to name drop y'all no more. Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I love y'all. Love, peace, hair, grease, and yeah, I'll see y'all in the next episode.